um, about the wind at uh, um, depending on what your distance is uh, 10 uh, miles per hour um, depending on in what direction it's blowing you could have you know more of an impact uh, shift um, and, and I don't know that a lot of people realize that um, because what you have that is considered 10 miles per hour in the area could be creating a lot more buffering, um, a lot more ups and downs that, uh, you know, that uh, are happening, especially here in like South Carolina. When, when I was in South Dakota, it just seemed to be steady because there's so much vast area out there that if you had a 20 mile an hour wind, it was just steady. You could actually hold for the wind consistently. Um, but here it's, it's really, it buffers badly. Um, and, yeah. and in South Dakota, it, unless you were shooting across the Cooley or something of that nature, um, most of your wind was kind of one direction where here, if I'm shooting a six or an 800 yard target, that wind may change multiple times in multiple directions. Uh, so it's very important to have uh, something that you're looking to follow those conditions on all the way out to your target. Um, and I'm seeing more and more of that the, uh, as I shoot more and more, uh, just learning, you know, I think that's one of the biggest challenges right now in, in being a good shot. I mean, we can dial out the majority of all the elevation and things with the technology that we have, but it's really left to the individual to, uh, to get in there and, uh, start making those good calls on, on the conditions that they have and, and making certain that the conditions that they're shooting in are conditions they were zeroed for. Um, and so, uh, that's a, that's a, a big challenge in, in my opinion. Absolutely. And uh, I know exactly what you mean about the buffeting. So uh, this happens where I'm at uh, because we have, uh, it tends to be like a lot of open fields that's broken up by patches of forest. Um, and in those sort of conditions, it's, it's quite common that you'll have different amounts of wind at different points in the path. And uh, this has happened to me. So I was at this uh, last year, I was at this shooting competition and we were shooting at something like 600 yards. Uh, but the, the, uh, this uh, uh, station was so tricky because where, where you were at when you were shooting, there was virtually no wind because you were protected by like a, a little forest. But then in the bullet's path, way down the field, like 400 meters away, you had quite severe crosswind. So we ended up pretty much all the shots, they, they ended up like missing the target entirely uh, because the, the crosswind was so severe out at the field. Uh, where, what, but you couldn't uh, you couldn't tell you know there was no way of telling that uh, where when uh, you were at the shooting station yes and one of the things that I, I don't know that a lot of people um, are familiar with I'm, I'm certain there's a lot of people that are familiar with it but I think a lot of uh, um, average shooters or below average shooters uh, would be fairly surprised at how much a wind at the muzzle affects a bullet versus a the same condition at say 400 yards uh that bullet has it gets you know it's more of a linear um impact and so if you put an impact on that bullet especially when it's just out of the muzzle um the condition that's applied there will have a different condition so you can't just look at a flag that's at if you're shooting 600 yards if you have a flag that's at 300 and another one at 450 and you're shooting a 600 yard target, you've got to give the flag at 300 a little bit more than what you would at 450. Um, in my opinion, you, you know, um, it's something that, that I try uh, to work on. Because I guess, uh, sorry, but um, just for my benefit, then you're saying more emphasis should be put at the 300 yard flag compared to the 450 yard flag. Whereas I'm thinking Correct. that the bullet is going to become more and more sensitive to wind, right? As it loses velocity. So, so shouldn't it, it should start uh, being more and more affected by wind with distance, right? 
So when a bullet um, is drifted one inch at 300, it's um, look at it as a uh, a mil radian as a circle, and yeah. so the impact as at 300 has now put that bullet on a, a slightly different path. And so as it's covering that ground, um, now it is pointed in a different fashion. So when it hits that same wind at 450, it's not in in an opposition, it's not going to correct it uh, because um, it on a radius, you're not going to get the same correction. And so, so when you're shooting into opposing winds, which I often do because my range is set up to where we have a um, a, a pretty long line, uh, which is probably a hundred yards, uh, from the shooting line. And if we're shooting on the long range side, so it's kind of broken up in two parts. We have a, an 840 yard, uh, long range. And then we have a big berm that is at 200 yards. And so that berm is probably, if I had to guess, maybe 50 or 60 feet tall. So as that wind's coming along and it hits that berm, it's not going to, it's not moving that berm. So the, it's either going over the berm or going around the berm. And so as it's pushing down that berm at 200 yards, it's creating like an, uh, an eddy that you would see in a, uh, a whirlpool kind of effect where it's coming off the, off of that big, it's collected a, a large volume of air that's being pushed directly in front of that long range so as that bullet passes through there it once it hits that long range and it's kind of going down the range itself it will kind of pull back to the opposite side so you can sit and look at flags and they'll be completely opposite just at a different distance and and they will be in complete disagreement on what those two flags are doing and so um I you know understand. Uh, so the, the way you explained it uh, makes perfect sense uh, so essentially what's happening uh, I happen to have a bullet here uh, so let's say mm -hmm. this is the bullet and it's going out out and it's reached 300 yards right and then it's being pushed by wind let's say this much right which means it might actually have changed its trajectory trajectory a bit right and it's gonna keep traveling and it's gonna keep getting more and more and more and more off even though the wind might be less at 500 yards, right? It's too late because the bullet has already shifted and it's already moving in the in the wrong direction. Is that what's happening? That is it, that is my interpretation, 100. Mm. Yes, um, yeah. So it's moved that bullet out of its intended uh, path, um, and now it's kind of uh, pointing in a different direction. Mm. And as the the longer it stays on that path the more it takes to correct it back, you know, with, uh, with a, uh, a different wind. And, uh, so, um, and those two winds may not be the same. It could be blowing 10 here and 15 here or vice versa. It, and, and most often will the winds coming off the edge of that berm are, are generally very stout. And then as they start to come back across, even though they'll pick that flag up, and, and have that flag standing in complete different opposite direction, it's not as intense um, of a wind. Yeah. And the shifting winds, that's uh, almost impossible to account for, uh, especially, especially if you have this sort of things like the berm that's breaking the wind up. And then depending entirely on each gust, essentially, each gust can be different. It can come at a, at a different speed, at different intensity, and it will react differently with the obstacle and create a different uh, effect, right? Which means that, you know, one bullet will be virtually unaffected, whereas the next one will be. And so I do a lot of, or not a lot of, but I do some target shooting at 300 meters. And uh, this is something you see that you can have your zeroing shots, you know, they're going in nicely, nicely, and it's always fine, and you know, the rifle is perfectly zeroed. And then all of a sudden you start getting flyers uh, for apparently no reason. And this is, uh, in my interpretation, it's this sort of crosswind effect uh, that can happen. And uh, that's going to start chucking your bullets around. I would agree with that 100%. 
um, most often here in South Carolina, um, we have conditions that tend to um, lay down in the afternoons. And especially as we get, it gets hotter and hotter. Um, as the summer is coming upon us, um, the last hour, hour and a half of the day could be to where there's nearly zero wind, which is a good thing for us. Uh, so we can get a true zero and you can kind of shoot with no wind to kind of get an idea of what that rifle is capable of. And a lot of times I'll do my testing when I can in that valuable time. As we get closer, one of the things that is another struggle as we start to head into the into the fall time frame, as the air begins to fall, it tends to become cooler right there in that last hour. But then what you begin to fight is mirage. Um, and right. mirage doesn't change the bullet, but it changes what you see and what your brain is interpreting as what the target is and what your reticle is and what and where that is actually positioned in, in in the real world. You know, your brain's interpreting one thing, but in the real world, it's just being influenced by the, you know, the... Uh, yeah, this, um, uh, this is uh, a classic uh, sort of beginner's mistake. If you have a... If you have, it's uh, quite common for people to use um, silencers over here. And you know, when you put a silencer, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to get... Uh, really hot quite quickly if you're shooting repeatedly so a a classic rookie mistake that a, a Swedish hunter will commit he will you know have a silencer on his rifle and he'll try to zero it right and he'll shoot shot after shot after shot trying to zero it not realizing that you know the mirage from the heat coming off the silencer is throwing his you know point of impact around all over the place but he just keeps shooting and shooting and shooting it's like why doesn't this rifle zero what's happening Yes, I would agree with that 100% other than the fact that it's a suppressor. Oh, sorry, suppressor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's called it, yes. That's uh, uh, silencer is a government name for it, <laughs> um, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, and no, the, just, uh, the, the name silencer is deeply misleading because it doesn't silence anything. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I was just throwing that out there. But yeah, but anyhow, so North Fork podcast.